voice has faded over the years. I can still hit the notes, I, they just don't sound very good. <laughs> I got a review once where they said um, I sounded like Weird Al Yankovic when he uses his genuine voice. <laughs> I'm taking that one to the grave. Explaining it kind of is like telling the magician's trick. The song came to me, I didn't go looking for it. That's why I started doing it in the first place. This is intrinsic to the whole point of doing any of it. There are some songs that spill out again. There are some that you gotta work at. That is part of talking about songwriting that I am genuinely interested in. You, as the listener, ascribe meaning to it. Interpretable, but not on the face knowable. I have modeled all of my songwriting on Cheap Trick, 38 Special, and Foreigner. Dispute me. Dispute me. I will fight you. We can edit that out. You're not going to believe this part, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. Just tell the whole story. And she kills the eagle while it's flying and rides its dying corpse to the ground. If you don't know, here's your hint. All the bells and whistles is everything I owned was in that van. That was an actual moment in time that I can call up right now and remember seeing the, the summer on the floor and the, the winter in the backyard. It had to do with the phrases you learn in French. The monkeys in the bush. Until my mother's dying day, she felt guilty about one very heinous sin that she had committed. So he goes and he takes the car to the gas station and the attendant comes out and says, is that your dog? <laughs> Poor Dipsy had a rough life. My sister still feels guilty because I wrote this song. <laughs> You know, it's about my mother's death, so it's, uh, it's gonna be dark. I can never say it without crying. <laughs> we always imagine the neighbors saying, I hope the Gilboys aren't grieving tonight, because, God, I could use some sleep. And it's not the only song I wrote about Ophelia. This is another example of adaptation where I'm taking something else that already exists and uh, making a derivative work. I don't want to call it stealing. We'll call it a derivative work. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Ophelia dies in Hamlet. <laughs> this is a song that I have gone back and forth on over the years, not sure if it was a good song or not. It happened more than once. I just want to have it on the record that I know that rivers don't have tides. And it was weird, at some point I was playing Hamlet and also performing in a rock band where I sang songs about Ophelia. Very meta. But yeah, evidently that was my first taste. <laughs> I don't know, I'm a terrible thief as well. But we'll get into that with Mary. It's because she suffers from dreaming. And then the jailer says, oh, we got some cures for dreamers in here, Mary. It's one of the moments, you know, where I fell madly in love. I just don't remember that. I may have said it. <laughs> May, may have been true, I, I don't know. I know who it's about. I wore her down by attrition. She was not immediately infatuated with me. You know what, it's Ross and Rachel. I was like, let's be on a break, we're on a break. But I didn't throw myself in the river. She's like a dog on linoleum. A lot of activity, just not getting anywhere. <laughs> the connection that we had was over trying to be authentic and live an authentic life. Look, the, the amount of uh, suffering I've put myself through in my life by comparing myself to Prince Valiant or any other, you know, cartoon hero of a man. I look back at that now in a less romantic light than I did at the time. Well, it's really just about letting go, really. That covers the, the second verse. <laughs> I veered off the subject. That's, that's a weird little moment. Sorry about that. Okay, as long as, as long as we're all enjoying it.